welcome back to another episode of Sundays with Selly. We're having another field trip today. We are with Dan from Life Raft Services, and we're going to be talking about marine safety. In particular, EPIRBs, personal EPIRBs, and some of the uh, highlights of differences between Cat 1s, Cat 2s, your personal EPIRBs, uh, all those kind of battery life, service, maintenance, and all those kind of things. So, uh, without further ado, Dan's going to kind of walk us through first. We're going to start off, let's talk about EPIRBs. Everybody kind of knows what they are, hopefully, but Dan, you can give us a quick uh, overview, and we'll go from there. All right, great. Uh, thanks again for coming by today. Looking forward to this. Um, so, we've got EPIRBs are really the full-size beacons you're looking at, and then PLBs are the, are the smaller ones, personal locator beacons. Um, so the full-size EPIRBs, and actually the PLBs too, are basically working off of uh, government satellites, uh, worldwide network of search and rescue satellites, and these are, are designed um, to, to contact uh, emergency rescue services if, if something goes wrong. Um, they're really meant as a as like a, a last ditch panic button. Um, these are going to get the real deal search and rescue guys looking for you um, if if something really goes wrong. Um, so the full size e pairs these are these are intended to be installed on a, a vessel um, and and stay there. The the smaller ones you can you can bring with you um, on the water. You can you can actually bring them skiing, hiking, anywhere in the world. Um, so so the the full size e pairs they're gonna live on your vessel, you're gonna register them to your, your vessel, and they're gonna stay there. Um, the bigger size, um, obviously, bigger battery in there, uh, longer transmission time once you turn it on. With, with either of the, the full-size EPIRBs you're looking at, um, usually at least 48 hours of, of continual transmission once you turn the, the EPIRB on. Uh, the, the smaller units are about 24 hours. Um, and a little bit of, of variance between models in there. Um, so obviously there's a, there's a couple of different types of, of the full-size EPIRBs here. Um, they're, they're broken up into two categories. You got category one, which you have over here. You're always gonna see that in, a, in some type of white housing, usually mounted um, on the outside, well, always mounted on the outside of the boat, usually on a hard top, on a roof, uh, somewhere that if the boat sinks, this has a, a clear path to float to the surface of the water. Um, so that's called the Category 1 EPIRB. And that's got a hydrostatic release on it, right? right? That's going to work off of water pressure. So as the boat's sinking, if you can't get to this, as the water pressure increases on this anywhere between 1 to 4 meters, give or take, I've got some variables in there, this is going to pop free, float to the top, and now it's automatically water activated uh, to come on board, come online, and start sending signal, right? Exactly. Perfect. Yep. Um, so that's category one. Category two, this is a different uh, model EPIRB, but uh, if we were looking at, at the same model, the EPIRB itself looks exactly the same between category one and category two. We're just talking about the bracket that it's mounted in. So, um, so a category two EPIRB um, is also commonly called a manual bracket or a, a manual release. So this type of EPIRB, you actually have to uh, physically remove the EPIRB from the bracket before you can activate it. Um, after it's out of the bracket, it's gonna behave exactly the same way as a category one EPIRB. Um, if you throw this in the water, it's gonna automatically turn on. Uh, but again, it, you have to physically take it out of the bracket to make it happen. Um, so that's category two EPIRB. And we kinda wanna also mention, if you have one of these in your ditch bag, make sure you keep it in the bracket. Sometimes your ditch bag might get a little moisture in there that's gonna give a false on for that. It's going to start transmitting. Coast Guard's going to show up at your boat, uh, so keep it in the bracket. Save those guys so they can be out there doing the real search and rescues. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that actually brings up a really good point about uh, registering these beacons, um, whether you have an EPIRB or a PLB. Um, it is required to, to register the beacon with um, NOAA in the U.S. Um, that's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's easy to do. You can do it online. Uh, you, can, you can nail it snail mail if you want. Um, but what that does is that registers your name, uh, a phone number, some emergency contacts. So if you are washing off your boat and set this thing off and you don't hear your phone ringing, um, then somebody at home, somebody else that you gave another uh, contact phone number, they're going to call. They're going to try calling those phone numbers first to see if it's an actual emergency before they send the helicopters and the, and the Coast Guard cutters and stuff like that. So it's super important to register these things. Um, and again, there's no subscription fee. It's com completely free. It's just you just got to do it. 
And then, so that's going to be our big EPIRBs, our, our mainstream ones. Now there's a new line out there. It's well, still relatively new, I guess. And that's the PLB style uh, EPIRBs here. Why don't you kind of walk us through the differences, you know, why you would maybe go with one of these versus one of the bigger ones. Sure. Um, so maybe you don't have your own boat. Maybe you've got a couple different boats. You're hopping back and forth between. Um, maybe you're going skiing or, or hiking in the winter time and you want to bring this thing with you. Um, this is going to do the same job. It uses the same satellites um, to communicate with the, you know, basically the same search and rescue crews. It's just small enough that you can stick it in a pocket or in a backpack or something like that. Um, again, the, the, the obvious difference is size. So you've got a smaller battery life in there. Um, and uh, so you're going to have a shorter transmission time once it's actually activated. Um, the other big difference is that these are not water activated. Uh, you actually have to uncover the activation switch and turn it on. So this is this is just a, a safety measure. So when these things are in your pockets and you're hiking around, you're not setting them off all the time. Um, so so the two main differences are uh, battery life, transmission time, um, and uh, water activated versus not with, with the full size e -perb. Other than that, it's doing the same job. So basically, we're talking 24 hour minimum time on this. Whereas we're looking at a 48 hour minimum time on this. So uh, he brought up a good point, not just for boats. You guys want to go out there, you want to go hiking, you want to be in the outdoors, the wilderness, hunting, four wheeling, throw one of these. If you got it for boating, take it with you, throw it in your glove box when you're out there. This doesn't just work on land. This is also for out in the, uh, anywhere, you know, really. Anywhere there's good satellite coverage, basically short of the North Pole and South Pole, um, this is going to get you covered out there. And then lastly, we're going to go over this more in a future episode, but we also have, um, it is an AIS man overboard. This is going to be localized man overboard. It doesn't go to a satellite, but what it does, as long as the boat has AIS on board, and this is packed into your inflatable life jacket, it pops off, it activates, and it's going to alert any boat in the vicinity that has AIS, you're going to show up on board their boat with the target. So it's really great for localized uh, on that. So just kind of a quick brief overview. I know it's a lot to take in there, but if you have any questions, give these guys a follow. It's Survival at Sea, and uh, they're going to walk you through everything. You need any of this stuff anywhere worldwide, they can get it to you. Visit them at survivalatsea.com. They have all the stuff available online. You need to get service on any of this stuff, like we talked about for batteries, the hydrostatic releases on these Cat 1s. It's a two-year type of service deal. You can send them in here. They're going to get you guys turned and burned pretty quick and make sure you guys are safe out there. So uh, be sure to give them a follow. Dan, thank awesome. you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. Next week, uh, there's not going to be a Sunday or Sally because even I need a break once in a while. So uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Peace.